coming up on Movie Buff. Meryl Streep and Amy Adams team up again for Julie and Julia. Colin Firth is the man leading Ben Barnes astray in Dorian Gray. And Perez Hilton's not her biggest fan, but see what you make of Rumor Willis in Sorority Row. I'm going to try to flip this thing over now, which is a rather daring thing to do. Before she changed everything. Before her, it was frozen back. food and can openers and marshmallows. Don't knock marshmallows. Feast your eyes on this. Meryl Streep and Amy Adams reunited in Julie and Julia. The last time we saw these two together was in doubt. This time, though, they don't share any on-screen time as their characters never actually meet. Amy plays blogger Julie Powell, who decides to cook her way through all the recipes in one of celebrity chef Julia Child's books. What am I doing? So, this is long story short, another meltdown. Crazy! Academy Award winner Meryl is Julia. Here's director Nora Ephron on what she's like to work with. Well, she's just an impossible demanding person and it's all you can do to get a good performance out of her. I mean, she's the easiest person in the world. She's completely prepared. She, she knows as much about her character as you do. So, when you want her to improvise, her improvisations are coming out of all this knowledge which makes them so rich and fabulous. She's divine. What is it that you really like to do? Eat. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. And we are so good I at it. Am. Look at you. Now, they how good you are. Front of you. Based on reality, Meryl does a great job playing such an infamous star. That wasn't her only challenge, as you may have noticed, and as Nora explains. Julia Child was famously tall. She was six feet two. And Meryl is five six. That is a huge distance to travel. And almost any, if you talk to any of the really big effects guys in Hollywood, the makeup guys, they'll tell you it can't be done. And she did it. As well as seeing Meryl looking tall, I was also fascinated by the true story of Julie Powell and how her blog became a huge hit. So big, she made it into a book, and now look, it's a film. That thing where people write every day about what they did yesterday, I think I would die if I had to do that. I would die if I, if you went through every day thinking, should I be writing about this? Should I be writing about that? Is this going to make it in? Am I having a thought right now? Not Nora's thing then. Still at work for Julie. Food for thought, hey? So you'll love Julie and Julia if you like our leading ladies who both give great performances, if you appreciate a cleverly written script, and if you like grub. Do you remember when I first came to London? You have the only two things worth having. Classic novels can make iconic films and adaptations. Look at Tale of Two Cities, To Kill a Mockingbird, or more appropriately, the BBC adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, starring this man, Colin Firth. Here he appears as Lord Henry Wotton in Dorian Gray, starring opposite Ben Barnes once more in this Oscar Wilde classic. Dorian is a sensitive young London boy who inherits his vicious grandfather's fortune, but after being introduced to the heady world of the Victorian capital, the beautiful Dorian begins to believe in his public popularity, captured in a portrait painted for him. You'll be the talk of the town, both of you. Indeed, he states to his new hedonist counterpart, Henry, that he would sell his soul to keep his visage. As Grey's childhood demons rear their head and his desires of eternal youth get stronger, his painted image begins to morph into the evil he has become, whilst his face remains unmarked. The classic story is one that yearned for a film adaptation, and where better to catch up with Firth than at the Cadogan Hotel, a regular spot for Wilde and the scene of his arrest in 1896. The consummate English gent Firth has his bounder throne challenged by Barnes, and it seems the young pretender looks to Colin as a guide. I wouldn't wish it on him. I mean, he doesn't take my advice at all. I mean, he comes to me for advice, he keeps coming back for more, and I just see this look of disappointment coming over his face when I try to give him some wisdom. Is that it? <laughs> well, yes, I mean, that's my experience. That's crap. So he, he goes away and, and looks at it for somewhere, and then he comes back for more. So I, I don't really know what he's looking for, but you know, my version of wisdom, I'm, I'm, I've been abundantly generous. 
uh, to him. So I think he's decided he's probably not going the Colin Firth route. Unfortunately, game. though, Barnes should listen a bit harder to the advice of a better actor in Firth. Dorian Gray is poor, touching on being labelled a real pity because it does not capture the horror of the text or adaptation since. Matthew Bourne's dance adaptation that has had recent success makes this film look like what High School Musical is to West Side Story. Admittedly, at moments of watching this, I was put off by the annoying gaggle of sceptics behind me laughing at the most dramatic moments, but it was so close to Hammer Horror, you could have been watching it in a 1950s Odeon Club on a Saturday morning. The biggest pity is that Firth really shows quality in this movie. His dark, youthful character has depth, cynicism, scepticism and hedonism in abundance, mirrored by his ageing, retired character later in the film that shows he truly is as good as we thought he was when he was making films like The English Patient. Unfortunately though, Barnes saw the prettiness of the character of Dorian as vacuous. Sadly, the reality is that that's just his final performance. Think Scream meets I Know What You Did Last Summer and you're pretty much there with Sorority Row. It's a bloody slasher with a hint of comedy about a prank which goes wrong for a group of sorority sisters. What did you do? I didn't do it. I slipped in the pills you gave me. I said give her one. Idiot. I didn't know. Give me the, give me the keys. You're going to the escalate now. I'm going. I'm clear. Right, no tongue. Easy there, Leslie Lohan. This is make believe, remember? If I go see a movie that's like really, really scary, I'm like this the entire time. time. And by the end, I'm like, whoa, okay. Gotta go to the chiropractor or something. Yeah, you're like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but this one really, you laugh, you're yeah. laughing so much that it kind of relieves all that. Well, it's like you start stress. to get at that tense You kind of start to get into it, and then you're like, okay. Oh, it's fun. I can laugh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brianna Evigan and Ruma Willis, eldest daughter of Hollywood heavyweights Bruce Willis and Demi Moore, head up what is a rather gorgeous bunch of girls who fake their friend's death to get back at her cheating boyfriend. Only he doesn't realise and kills her for real. Oops. The girls cover it up, then a year later, everyone connected to the murder is slowly picked off. There's plenty of crying, sniffles, shaking and more crying as one by one they're brutally murdered. And Ruma says the conditions during filming actually helped make those scenes look realistic. It was great actually, and I mm -hmm. actually appreciate this now more than I did then, but it was freezing out there. It was maybe like 20 degrees, and you know, obviously laundry. we're all in like lingerie, so the, the kind of conditions that we were in actually really kind of helped get that mm -hmm. emotion, because we're already shaking, and you know, kind of helps when everybody's yeah. there. And it seems the 21-year-old has definitely inherited some of her famous parents' acting skills, because boy, can this girl scream. The director says, like, you are like queen of the screams. <laughs> yeah. She really is. They, you know, they came out of nowhere one day. Everybody heard it, too. Everyone was like, who the hell is I kept that? feeling so bad, because every time I'd have to scream, I'd have to be like, oh, hey, guys, yeah. just want to let you know what's <laughs> well, happening. You, you do have to, because the sound guys uh, the mic definitely just, need to turn it down. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. I don't think they were too <laughs> happy the first couple yeah, times. I don't know. <laughs> we can't show you any killing action or any screaming for that matter because it's all just far too scary. Now, a few of the deaths are particularly gruesome, but there are plenty of funny moments to balance it all out. If blood, guts, gore and girls not wearing an awful lot are your thing, definitely check out Sorority Row.